Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about some of the basics of welding aluminum TIG using Yes Welder's TIG 250P AC DC TIG machine. So if you're new to TIG and you've never welded aluminum before, it's kind of its own tricky beast, which is why the first thing a lot of people ask you when you say you're a TIG welder is, can you weld aluminum? Well, today we're going to break down some of the myths, some of the thoughts about how to get started TIG welding aluminum so you can go out in your garage with your Yes Welder and start working on it yourself. So the main difference when TIG welding aluminum versus like a stainless steel or a carbon steel is that you're going to be running alternating current. One of the biggest differences between DC TIG welding and AC TIG welding is the balance and the frequency controls. Now these are due to running AC. When you're running DC current, when you're welding steel, stainless steel, the current is flowing in one direction the whole time. When you go to weld aluminum, the current is actually running both directions, alternating current AC. That breaks it down into, are you running in EP, electrode positive, or EN, electrode negative, and that is where the balance setting comes in. Now, the balance setting is really used in terms of like how dirty your metal is, right? So aluminum, after it sits out for a while, creates an oxide on the outside, and you have to bust through that oxide to get to the bare metal. That is where the balance setting comes in. The balance setting also changes the penetration and the width of your weld. So when we're setting the balance, we have to figure out how much EN we can run without contaminating the weld. Because if you run too high on EN, right? So EP is a cleaning, EN is the welding. If you run too high on EN and on too dirty or too oxidized metal, you're just gonna introduce contaminants into your weld. If you run too much EP, you're gonna introduce too, there's gonna be too much cleaning action. The weld's gonna suffer because it's not gonna be very deep. It's gonna be super wide, flat. The actual arc is gonna be very erratic, which we will see here in a second. You're also gonna use your tungsten up because the, the heat is in EP is going into the tungsten, not into the workpiece. You're gonna melt your tungsten. So really the balance is finding a balance between EN and EP and just so getting the cleaning action done, but not overdoing it. So let's run two beads right now. We're gonna want to run at the lowest setting. So 15 on the TIG 250P ACDC TIG welder on balance. And we're gonna see how that looks with the cleaning action. And we're gonna run one as high as it can go, 65% balance and see the cleaning action on that and compare those. All right, so here we are with a fresh, nice, sharp serrated tungsten, which is what we're gonna use for aluminum AC on a new machine. We've got some fresh aluminum and we've got the balance setting on 65%. So here we can see the balance control high on 65 and it is running way too much in the EP, right? We can see this by this mess right here this very wide cleaning section right here. There's so much energy right now running EP going into that, into cleaning, that the weld is actually suffering. We have a wider weld, not great penetration, cleaning section very wide, and we have this jumbled up mess where we're actually not even running enough EN to make a stable arc. And that's what we're seeing right here. All right, so now we've changed the balance setting all the way down as low as it can go on the TIG 250P down to 15. Let's see how that goes. So here we have the weld at 15 on the TIG 250P balance setting. And as we can see, the cleaning action is really tight to the edge of the weld. There's not a lot of cleaning action. It's very narrow. The arc is really tight and it's real clean. We're getting good penetration on that. It's just really tight. So as we can see, setting your balance and getting the cleaning action correct on an AC aluminum TIG weld is absolutely vital. Setting too much EN on a dirty piece on a dirty piece of metal, not getting that cleaning action, you're gonna have contaminants in the weld and the weld's gonna fa fail. If you run too much EP, you're gonna have poor penetration, over cleaning, and the arc is absolute trash. 
which was seen, the weld ended up trash too. So really practicing in aluminum and finding where you like the balance is key to having a good aluminum weld. Now because it's going back and forth, we have to kind of do our consumables set up a little bit differently. First is the tungsten. On older machines, you would have to use pure tungsten, which is the green label, and you would have to actually ball up the tip instead of using a nice sharp tip to get it to transfer on AC, the arc to transfer on AC well. Now, the newer machines, like the Yes Welder TIG 250, you can actually use like a standard uh, tungsten electrode that you grind down to the tip, similar to welding either steel or stainless steel. The only difference is you have to use seriated gray tungsten. You can't use thoriated, which is a popular steel tungsten. You have to use seriated for the correct transfer of the electric arc. Now the second one is the actually prepping the material itself. Aluminum has an oxide coating on it that the longer it's been out in the environment, the thicker it gets. So you're gonna have to turn off the cleaning action on your TIG machine. If you're using fresh aluminum like I am today, it's not that big of a deal, but you are gonna see it when you weld along the edges of your arc, you're gonna see the metal start to like bust up and crack. It, lo it looks like it's cracking, but it's not, it's cleaning. And it's basically exposing the bare metal to your arc, getting that oxide layer off. The second thing is before we start welding, we are gonna to try to brush as much of that oxide layer off as possible using a brush and really just getting in the groove and trying to just clean the metal up as much as possible. Lastly, we're gonna be using aluminum TIG rods rather than steel or stainless steel TIG rods. So let's get this fired up and actually start talking about torch position and how we're gonna move the puddle because the puddle moves much differently on aluminum than it does steel. So a good way to practice and learn welding aluminum is just getting some aluminum angle. So what I have here is just some two inch by two inch, eighth inch thick aluminum that I've cut into seven inch sections and we tack down the middle. And then we're gonna run our first bead down the middle on this side. And then if we want to, we can flip it and run a second bead on the open corner here. Kind of trying different angles, different positions on welding. And then we can cut off another seven inch section, tack it on here and basically create this big ridge and keep going and practicing our welds. So the first things first is I'm going to turn the machine on and run some tacks down. This. So now I've got a couple tacks in it. I'm gonna bring the camera over here and actually show you because you can physically see the cleaning action of the torch. You can kind of see what I'm talking about until you get under the hood yourself and take a look at it. As we can see these affected section right here, that's actually where the oxide has been busted off and the bare metal is showing. Now when you're actually welding, you can see this flaking off, breaking off, cracking off in your arc and it's actually really cool to check out. All right, so let's talk about actually how to kind of angle the torch and what you're looking for when you're welding aluminum. So when you're welding on steel, the torch angle is gonna be similar on aluminum. You're gonna want it going into the joint, have a little bit of a push angle and just carry on like that. Now, the difference is with steel, you can get a very fluid puddle and you'll move it and it'll flow and it'll sit and nice. Aluminum is a very, very sticky puddle. It's hard to move. So what you're gonna actually work on doing when you're starting is heating it, you know, heat it up, get a good puddle. With steel, you can go pretty fast and like flare into it. On aluminum, you have to go a little bit slower and be a little bit more methodical. So we're gonna start the arc, watch the cleaning action start to break up that oxide layer, start to melt the base metal, start the puddle. We'll see the puddle start. We're gonna add the filler rod, drive the filler rod into the puddle and then scoot forward. Now, when we scoot forward, we're gonna scoot forward, not a lot, just a little bit, and that is gonna determine our spacing on our dimes, is we're gonna scoot forward, stop, wait. We're gonna see that wet in nice, drive filler rod, scoot forward, wait, let it wet in, drive filler rod, and then keep going like that. It's a bit more of a methodical step-by-step -step, as opposed to steel where you can just heat it up and just push a puddle and add filler rod. So let's prep the metal first, and then we're actually gonna start welding. So like I said, 
you know, we're gonna want this as clean as possible. We have broken up some of the oxide off this, but before we start welding, we're gonna take a brush and just really kind of get in there and try to clean it up as best as possible. And then we'll let the cleaning action of the TIG 250P do the rest of the work. There you have it folks, TIG welding aluminum on Yes Welder's TIG 250P AC DC machine is as easy as that. Switching it over into AC from DC, running one amp per thousands, maybe a little bit higher. This is eighth inch, so that's 0.125. I was running between, you know, 125, 135 in there. Going slow, making sure you're using the correct tungsten, seriated in this instance with this machine you know, using the correct rod, aluminum, making sure the actual aluminum is brushed, using your brush, making sure it's clean. And then, you know, starting that arc, waiting for it to wet in, going slow, adding rod, moving forward, holding, waiting for it to wet in, hitting the puddle, moving forward. It's all about watching the puddle and seeing how it moves and learning how to manipulate it, which comes with time and practice. So go guys, get in the garage, fire up the machine, get to welding aluminum, and until next time, enjoy welding with Yes Welder.